video on the subject of atrial fibrillation. Now, atrial fibrillation is a very common heart rhythm disturbance. And the problem is that it can lead to strokes. And it can also significantly and adversely impact on a person's quality of life. So the first thing to do is to talk to you about what is atrial fibrillation. Atrial fibrillation is a heart rhythm disturbance, which is characterized by the heart going irregular and not beating as effectively as it should. This can be quite difficult for people to understand, so I usually use some sort of analogy. And um, what I'd like to do is to use the same analogy in this video. So instead of imagining the heart to be, to have four chambers, the heart does have four chambers, two at the top, which are called the atria, and two at the bottom, which are called the ventricles. Why don't we try and imagine the heart to be like a galleon of, of slaves who are working hard at rowing this galleon forwards? And we're all equipped with 100 slaves, uh, 15 of whom are weak slaves, 85 of whom are strong slaves. The 15 weak slaves sit at the top deck, the 85 strong slaves sit at the bottom deck. Now, it's important to realize that the captain of the ship um, sits at the top, so he's one of the 15 weak guys. And the role of the captain is twofold. The first is he tells everyone to row in a coordinated fashion. And the second is that he tells everyone how fast or slow to row. So when everyone doesn't need to be rowing very fast, he tells them to slow down. And when they need to be rowing faster, he tells them to speed up. Now, whenever everyone has to work harder at trying to get this galleon moving forwards, and the analogy is the same as having high blood pressure because the heart as a whole has to work much harder to try and get blood pushed um, out of it when the pressure is high, um, then um, everyone's having to work harder. And if they're having to work harder over a long period of time, then the 15 guys at the top, the weak guys, get tired. And they can then give up and say, look, we can't do this anymore. We're tired. We want to rest. So when that happens, that condition is called atrial fibrillation. The top two chambers, the atria, have stopped working because they're tired. Now, it is unusual for them to stop working and never get back to work again. Uh, often what happens is they stop working and then off their own accord after a little while, they start working again. And then they stop working and then they start working again. But as time progresses, the natural history is that they stop working and at some point they will not start working again. So three things happen when um, the top 15 guys stop working. The first thing is that the ship or the galleon is now moving on 85% rather than 100%. So you lose about 15% efficiency of the heart. The second thing to say is that the captain, the guy who was telling everyone to row in a coordinated fashion, well, he sits at the top. And so when the top 15 guys give up, so does he. And therefore, there is no coordination anymore. And so the heart starts beating irregularly. And the third thing to say is that the captain's other role is to tell everyone to slow down if they're going too fast or to speed up if they're going too slowly. Now, when the captain has stopped, the, 50, the 85 guys at the bottom, they may row extra hard, harder than they need to. So the heart may race or slow down excessively um, and out of keeping with what is required of it at that time. So in essence, you could be sitting there and your normal heart rate should be about 70, but if you're in atrial fibrillation, it could be racing at 150. Alternatively, it could be slowing down to 30. Uh, the point is that if it's racing at 150, two things could happen. The first is that the bottom 50, 85 guys could get tired as time progresses. And the second thing is you will undoubtedly start feeling almost like you've been doing an activity to get your heart rate that high. So over a period of time, you will feel more tired, you will feel lethargic, you will not be able to do as much. Because remember, even if, if it's going at 150 at rest, then imagine what happens to it when it starts, when you start doing an activity, it could go at 180. And that could obviously significantly affect a how a person feels. 
So that's what atrial fibrillation is. Um, it is an irregularity of the heart. It is a disorder of both of rhythm, because the heart becomes irregular, and also of rate, because the heart can race or slow down excessively. So the next thing is, and whenever I see any patients, you know, the, the two things always to say to a patient is, well, how does this condition affect your lifespan? And secondly, how does this condition or how could this condition affect your quality of life? So the first thing to say is that um, in terms of lifespan, this condition can cause strokes. And that is the main risk with this condition. It is not going to cause you to have a sudden heart attack or drop down dead, but it could certainly cause strokes. And the reason it does this is because when you're in atrial fibrillation, you are you, only the 85 guys at the bottom are doing the work. So you are working on 85% efficiency, which means only 85% of the blood is coming out of the heart, which means that 15% of the blood can stay within the heart and stagnate. And if it stagnates, it can form a blood clot. And then bits of that blood clot could break off and go to the brain and cause strokes. So the big risk with this condition is strokes. Um, and the risk, a person's risk of stroke can now be quantified. Uh, and there's something called the CHADS2 VASC scoring system, which tells you what your risk is and you can look that up on wikipedia but in essence you get a certain number of points so if you are above the age of 65 you get one point if you're above the age of 75 you get two points if you're female you get one point if you're hypertensive or diabetic or if you have heart failure or if you've had a previous stroke or if you have vascular disease you all, you get points for all those and if you have even one of these i.e. if you're above the age of 65 and you have nothing else, then your risk of stroke are high enough to justify you taking blood thinning tablets for the rest of your life. If, on the other hand, you have no risk factors whatsoever, then it is not unreasonable not to take anything. Although this is just what the guidelines say, remember as age is a risk factor and we're always getting older, your risk is only going to increase. And therefore, to my mind, I tend to try and uh, recommend blood thinning medications to all my patients, having said that the guidelines would say that if your CHADS2 VASC score is zero, you don't need blood thinning medications. Um, um, aspirin does not thin the blood adequately to offer enough protection against stroke. So aspirin is it has no role whatsoever. You either are on something, i.e. a proper blood thinning tablet like warfarin or one of the novel oral anticoagulant agents which have now been released like Pradaxa, Apixaban, Rivaroxaban, or you take nothing. And only the very, very, very low risk people should take nothing. The second thing to say is, and, and as long as you're on a blood thinning medication, you're trying to do all that you can to cover your risk of having a stroke, okay? The next thing to say is, how can it affect your quality of life? Well, there's two ways it can affect your quality of life. The first is that you've lost 15% efficiency of the heart. And so you're now firing on 85% as opposed to 100%. For the majority of people, that's not a big issue. But if you have already got a weak heart, or if you have a valve problem, for example, then that 15% can make a huge difference. And some people just do not like being in atrial fibrillation. They feel tired, they feel dizzy, they feel like they can't do much. Uh, but for the majority of patients, just being in an irregular rhythm is not the problem. The bigger problem is this lack of rate control when you're in atrial fibrillation. So the heart can race excessively. And so if you could, if you're just walking, instead of your heart going from a heartbeat going from 70 to 90, it can go from 100 to 160. And that then makes you feel extremely tired. And, uh, you know, you can't do as much. You, and, and that can really impact on a person's quality of life. So the, and, and the other thing, obviously, to say is that if you keep that going, if that keeps going, then, uh, of course, at, as, as time progresses, the 85 guys um, who are pumping the, who are um, rowing the galleon will get tired. So the ventricles start getting tired as well. So 
in summary, I think the important things are when, when you're um, uh, thinking about how to go about managing your atrial fibrillation, the first thing is obviously you try and control the things that cause it, high blood pressure, controlling your blood pressure. Um, alcohol can do it, thyroid disease can do it, uh, sometimes age can do it. Um, the second thing to say is that it's always very important to have an informed discussion with your general practitioner or your cardiologist about blood thinning medication. And really, you should always be thinking um, the, the, the default should be to go on blood thinning medication unless you have strong feelings, feelings against it. Um, the third thing to say is that for, it's really important to try and see if you can control the heart rate um, so that your the heart is not doing excessive amounts of work, and that can be done with something like digoxin, which controls the heart rate at rest, or even better, a beta blocker, which controls the heart rate on exercise. Um, then there are other things that one could do. The first thing is, well, can you get out of atrial fibrillation? Sure, you could get out of atrial fibrillation, and particularly if um, the atrial fibrillation isn't very long standing, uh, then it is possible to deliver a small shock under general anesthetic to the heart, and that can sometimes have the effect of bringing the heart back into a normal rhythm. Uh, having said that, that does not then mean that you can stop taking the blood thinning medication because the natural history of atrial fibrillation is that you can go back into atrial fibrillation and you may not even know that you've gone back into atrial fibrillation. And that is a big problem because if you don't know you're in it, uh, then you may not necessarily take any blood thinning medications unless it, until it's too late. So you the, the time to think about coming back into a normal heart rhythm is simply if you are not liking being irregular, even after your rate is controlled. So if you are just missing that 15% extra kick, then it's worth having a go. Uh, it's not so that you can stop the blood thinning medication. And the cardioversion, the electrical cardioversion, the shock treatment, um, can only be can only be administered after you've had your blood thinned for a, for at least four weeks, um, and then after you've had the shock treatment, uh, you'll still need to be on blood thinning medication unless your Chad's two vas score is zero, in which case uh, it would be possible to stop the blood thinning medication altogether. Um, the other thing that a lot of people talk ask me about in my clinic is how about being cured from it? You know, there's something called an ablation, electrophysiological studies and elect, um, radio frequency ablation. Now, to my mind, the success rates of atrial fibrillation ablation are not very good. And I would only recommend it for those people in whom just uh, anticoagulation and rate control doesn't work, i.e. those people who you've tried to get them into a, sign, uh, into a normal rhythm by shocking and that hasn't worked and they still just cannot tolerate or just hate being irregular. Um, in those patients, you could um, ask your cardiologist to refer you to an electrophysiologist who, uh, and there's no harm in going and seeing an electrophysiologist. You get to explore the idea, explore the technique. And of course, you don't have to uh, have it done. It's always a good idea to um, just become more knowledgeable about exactly what the procedure involves. So um, that's a little bit about atrial fibrillation. I hope this was useful. Um, I'll try and do some more tutorials or videos in the near future. Uh, but in the meanwhile, um, um, I wish you a good night. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to get in touch with me on my website or through my secretary. And the telephone number is um, listed on the, on the screen. Well, good night. Bye.